Good morning. Welcome to uh, Emmett Grove Baptist Sunday School Hour. We are continuing our study in God's will, and uh, we have uh, been uh, over the past couple of weeks uh, when we began to think about uh, and read the scriptures on God's will that we be sanctified, that we be set apart uh, for His His purpose and and then for His glory. Uh, we uh, we read of the Holy Spirit's work in doing that and the Holy Spirit's uh, involvement, the acting agent of God, the third person of the Trinity, and, uh, and, and how he uh, empowers believers and, uh, and, and, and truly does the work of, of, of God in a sense uh, through sanctification. It, that led us to the study of the Holy Spirit because we are studying God's will. Uh, Ephesians 5.17 that we know what the will of the Lord is. And if we know these things, if we know the Lord, uh, uh, we, we will be in his will. And uh, his will is his word. We said this earlier in this study. And um, I, I, I don't know if really, truly, if I knew what I was saying, it was true, but I'm beginning to realize that, that the whole Bible from, from cover to cover uh, is about God's will. His word is. And so it's taken us quite deeply into the study of the Holy Spirit, the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the person of God um, that works through believers. And, and, and nothing is accomplished in God's kingdom or nothing is accomplished outside of God's will apart from the work of the Holy Spirit. So here we are, the third week on the Holy Spirit within the study of God's will. And I know God wants us to be here. Um, I, sometimes part of me says, how have, we, how have we gotten off this far from God's will that now we are in a very in-depth study of God's Holy Spirit, a very mysterious uh, person of God in a sense. Remember, Jesus described him as the wind. We don't know uh, where he comes from or where he's going, but we do know he's there and we know his presence. Uh, but we continue today uh, in the study of God's uh, uh, Spirit, uh, his Holy Spirit. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. And, uh, and next week, matter of fact, we're going to study that he, he leads all prayers, uh, the Holy Spirit. There's really no prayers offered to God apart from the Holy Spirit of God. So uh, that being said, we will open up with a, with a prayer this morning of his blessing on the, on the words and the thoughts of God that he has given us this week. Father, we thank you this morning, Lord. Uh, I just, uh, you are uh, uh, such a holy and, and, and righteous God, and Lord, that even to think that you exist in three persons is beyond man's capability. And as it's, it has been said, uh, Lord, who can make these kind of things up? This is, <clears throat> this is beyond the, the imagination of, of man, uh, the comprehension of man, almost in a sense, Lord. But we just accept you. And uh, even the church, it took them hundreds of years to even to, to, to figure out, in a sense, or to comprehend uh, that you do exist as God the Father, as the Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior, and the Holy Spirit of God. So, Lord, I just pray this morning that, that by your Spirit, God, that you would lead us, that he would guide all things here, Lord, and uh, just, just teach us about yourself. We want to know you. And, God, if we know you and if we know the Holy Spirit, then we will certainly begin to, to, to know your will and, and your heart for us. So, God, have your way. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen and amen. So, um, last week we speaking on the Holy Spirit, we sort of kind of put it in a phrase like this, kind of the Holy Spirit's work in general. And, and I don't ever like to associate God as being general. He is anything but general. But the three things we kind of focused on last week to just bring back uh, kind of a reminder or kind of attach on from last week was, was that, that the Holy Spirit, remember, he's the acting agent of God and uh, nothing happens for the glory of God or for the benefit of the kingdom or for, or for anything that pleases God if it's outside of the, the Holy Spirit's work because he knows the thoughts of God and he gives those to us. And that's one of the things we talked about. He knows God's thoughts. Uh, it's just something that God reveals himself through the Holy Spirit of God. That's how, how people are saved, how we have just about everything that we do on planet Earth. Uh, if you're pleasing to God, that's, it's going to be led by the Holy Spirit of God. And uh but he holds life. We read some scriptures from the Old Testament that uh, even in the New Testament that, that God gives life, sustains life through the Holy Spirit of God. And if he removes his spirit, uh, life will cease to be. Man, animal, whatever created. And then we looked at the scriptures that the Holy Spirit um, knows the thoughts of God and he also um, revealed them to, to the uh, 
to the writers of the Bible, uh, the apostles, uh, certainly uh, uh, John and, and Peter and, and, and Paul uh, and others that wrote. Um, but but it, it is God breathed. We remember we talked about God's breath. Uh, being uh, his spirit uh, in, in a, in a um, sort of a, a um, illustrating of that, but it, it is scriptural uh, that it's uh, that scripture came from God, and it was not so much the reader as it was the writer of the scriptures that was moved. And we and we say this interpretation about salt scripture is interpreting scripture, but the writers got it right because they listened to God, and so this is kind of the things now. We're going to move this morning into more personal. We're going to really move into, matter of fact, the little title I heard written down here is Acts of the Holy Spirit. Now, the book of Acts written by Dr. Luke is certainly that. Um, it's, it's, it's the movement of the Holy Spirit onto, onto people, even the church itself, uh, and the things at Pentecost after that when the Holy Spirit came. Remember, Jesus said, and please remember this, that, that the Holy Spirit um, uh, would come um, after his... Uh, uh, ascension back to heaven 50 days after after he was uh, arisen from the dead uh, but he would say this that that he had to go back to the father uh, so that the holy spirit would come remember that but jesus would say this that i had to go away but it is, it is to your advantage advantage is a key word here i was thought we were going to maybe talk more about that last week and we might have but i want the advantage i i do i want to, i really want the advantage of everything i'm a very selfish person Sometimes and uh, sometimes it's I, I, I do uh, glorify God in it, but a lot of times I don't. I really be honest with you, but I want an advantage. I, if I'm going to do something, I want to study about it and know it. If I uh, now I do, I'm really more researching things, uh, even even just common things I do for myself, projects or whatever. See what somebody else did and learn from their mistakes, and you know those kind of thoughts kind of start to describe us in, in God's holy word. You know. Uh, uh, to know, I want to know. I want to know. So I want the advantage. Well, the Holy Spirit is our advantage. So we're gonna move more personal. It's gonna be moving uh, back to the title. I kind of got sidetracked on the Book of Acts, the Acts of the Holy Spirit in the believer, and it's starting to get very, very personal here, um, as as God's word is. Um, very, very personal. Salvation is as personal as it gets. Um, and also, what, what we're gonna be, begin to see here, we're gonna call to attention even this morning. That, that the things we're going to be talking about in the works of the, of the whole, in the ministry of the Holy Spirit are, I think I read in a little chart, 24, a couple of dozen at least, ministries. We're not going to probably address every one of them, but I bet you that if we go back and look at this study, we'll be kind of circling back around many, many things of the Holy Spirit of God. Remember, we want to know the will of God. The Holy Spirit knows the thoughts of God. So if I know Him and I'm paying attention to Him and I'm obedient, and these things we're going to look at in detail this morning, uh, I'm going to be in God's will. I'm going to know what it is, and, and I'm certainly going to know what I'm not. Um, but evidence of salvation, and everybody wants to know that. There's that, that mystery sometimes. But we're going to, uh, maybe today that um, uh, we'll, we'll uh, feel more at ease and have God's peace in this. Uh, and if we don't, we need to seek God. And, and we're never, when we call uh, to attention to one's salvation, um, it, it's never um, to cause doubt. It's, uh, and that doubt means not that God can't save. Uh, that's not the doubt we're talking about, but the doubt is, am I saved? And I'm praying that these these lessons would br bring that to our attention. We need to know that we know that we know that we know. Um, and and actually, uh, or I heard this before um, from from some brothers at at, uh, at Emmett, and I and I, and it's true. I believe that that sometimes doubt can actually be good. It can be spiritually healthy. Uh, not to doubt God, but to make sure that I'm saved. In other words, to to to, to examine ourselves. Paul would say that we got to examine our hearts before we take communion. Communion, we examine our hearts, and and you know we're sinful people. Um, but but it, but in a sense, it, uh, it, it goes back to make we. I want to know, and I'll share some personal personal thoughts with you. Uh, so as we we begin talking about the Holy Spirit, if we don't know Him, we might not know God. Matter of fact, we won't know God apart from His Holy Spirit, and uh, certainly, even if we're saved, we can, our walk can get off course. And uh, so, as we look at these things, you, you'll see. I, 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 I know God's leading this, and certainly when we speak on the Holy Spirit and He He guides all things, it's just one of these uh, special times when we're studying uh, God's Word that, that it comes alive in my heart, and that's because of Him. Uh, these things we speak, but I want to go to Romans eight. I want to look at the indwelling. 
Uh, what does it mean that the Holy Spirit indwells? Um, in Romans 8, uh, as I understand it, I think the, the ladies are actually, uh, the women's Bible study on Monday nights, uh, are actually studying Romans 8. And as I heard uh, 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 dear uh, sister uh, Joy um, say that chapter 8 was her favorite chapter in the Bible. And that's a very, very a uh, good book, uh, and it, it really concerns the Holy Spirit of God. It's a, it's the most scripture, I do believe, compacted in one particular area of the Bible that describes God's Spirit and the work that he does. But Romans 8, 9, this is where I wanted to go. Uh, remember, I, we're looking for the advantage, and the Holy Spirit is our advantage. Jesus uh, said that he would be. Uh, so look at Romans 8. We're just going to go right into verse 9 and just look at this. However, Paul writes, you are not in the flesh. We're going to be speaking about the flesh, uh, next week or the week, in the weeks to come uh, the flesh and the spirit this this battle between the two so he, he says that you're not in the flesh but in the spirit capital spirit and then he says this if indeed the spirit of God that's the Holy Spirit dwells in you you get that if the Holy Spirit dwells in you but if anyone now listen to this statement because this but is a there's a there's a there's a conflict here but if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, you say, what is that? Spirit of God, Spirit of Christ, Holy Spirit of God. It's just another name. Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. Um, and this is just laid out as, as plainly. I, I, there's a true statement that I uh, heard this in a sermon you know, years ago um, that the cross is the great divider. And, uh, and it certainly is. It, it divides uh, the saved from the unsaved, the, uh, the believer from the unbeliever. Uh, their destinies are two different destinies, one with God, one eternally with God, the other without. It is the divider. And once you are on, on, on uh, and saved by the blood of Jesus, you cannot uh, lose that. And, and so uh, you, the, the two, uh, uh, the, uh, the cross and dividing the righteous from the unrighteous, uh, we remember uh, in the story of the rich man and Lazarus where the man in hell was looking back. He couldn't cross over. He couldn't get back into the presence of God. It's, it, was a, it was a chasm there, and that's the, the divider. I like to, I love to read that over in, I think it's Luke 15. Uh, it's really about the only uh, story of heaven and hell uh, in, the, in, 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 in that division. But it's the great divider, and it is. Uh, I think about the, um, uh, the, the great uh, Gospel of John. John opens up about Jesus, and, and the book of John is all about the, the deity of Christ, that he was God. And uh, so much, so much, I'm just amazed at how much we've been in John, especially um, around 14, chapter 14 through 17 over the last uh, month or so. Uh, but John opens up that, that Christ was... The, uh, that, that he was uh, he was uh, he was the word and, and the word was God and and uh, that he was light and it, he came into the world and uh, and immediately uh, about uh, verse nine he begins to talk about reje rejection and, and those that, that that God didn't open their hearts they, they they rejected him they didn't think he was God they didn't think he was Messiah so you already you see even in the, uh, the great book of John, a division. You see the believers, and then you see the unbelievers, and that's that division. The cross is the great divider. I don't know of a verse that more plainly states that Paul right here, and it is according to the Holy Spirit of God. Um, and so we talked about the flesh and the spirit. That's coming up. Uh, but let's look at this regeneration because this is uh, uh, this this flesh causes a mindset to to be activated in us, and in the spirit because he says in the flesh. And in the spirit, and we know this. We you can go back up and look at six, verses six. And we're gonna. I don't want to jump into that because I'm gonna kind of use that. I think in the or God's gonna use it in the next couple of weeks. But the mindset on the flesh is death. Uh, but the mindset on the spirit is life and peace. Wonderful verse right there in verse six. All of the doings of the Holy Spirit of God, the workings of the Holy Spirit of God. Reading through the Bible, I'm just totally amazed uh, always at. And the way God just gives me scripture to teach on is I'd read through the Bible and nobody ever put this together. Titus 3, Titus 3, 5 uh, through 7. I want to read this to you because it just fits in so perfectly. Talk about regeneration. What in the world is regeneration? Well, that's when you get saved. There, there's, a, there's something God renews us and makes us new. He regenerates us in a sense. He says this, uh, uh, Paul writing to Titus. Uh, uh, he saved us not on the basis of deeds, which we have done in righteousness. It's not a salvation of works but according to his mercy uh, by the washing 
listen to how it's work, how it works, how how God saves us, but by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out upon us richly, poured out as the Holy Spirit coming upon us uh, through Christ Jesus our Savior, so that being justified by His grace, that's God's grace, we will be made heirs. Mm, that's interesting, isn't it? Oh my goodness, heirs of heaven. Think about Miss Kim Gay right now. She is she has gotten her inheritance. Uh, uh, and she is in God's presence, made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Uh, jumped a the gun there on that, but eternal life. And boy, I tell you, uh, we we just we worshipped uh, at Kim's funeral this week uh, of where she's at now. The suffering of this earth is nothing compared to eternity. So let's speak just a minute about this this mindset, this new way, this regeneration, a new way of thinking. Uh, and it is the battle of the flesh and the spirit. And, and again, it seems like I, God wants me to speak on that now, but, but that is, I know I have notes in, coming up on these things. But what about this, dwe and this dwelling? Now, I want to talk about that a minute. Uh, if the Holy Spirit dwells, dwells carries the, carries the, the meaning of, of, of a permanent residency, a setup. When I'm doing, I'm, I live in this home that I'm making this recording. This is, this is where I dwell. Uh, this is where I eat most of the time. This is where I sleep and I and I and I bathe and I you know, uh, uh, you know this is where I this is my house, and so uh, dwelling. And we'll talk about that in just a second about we us being a house. Um, but this indwelling when when we're saved it refers to a uh, that our souls become the home of the Holy Spirit of God that He comes upon us to live and to set up residency here with us. Uh, this dwelling, dwelling is not something that you, uh, uh, it's not like a hotel <laughs> where you go and you rent a room, uh, very expensive probably, uh, and you're gone the next day. That's not what the, not what the Holy Spirit, uh, as, we, as we ponder these things. Um, and so Paul is going to just plainly, we just mentioned the great divider, that if God's Spirit dwells in you, uh, you are you are of the Spirit, but if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Him. We must understand. I underlined this long ago because I, I have a uh, God has always given me, or at least in the last several years, uh, um, um, much concern about lost people. I'm talking about people that are coming to church, and you've heard me say this many, many times, and I don't want to say I said it, uh, but but God's saying it through me. Uh, that that we we really have concern of the church today. That I just go to church and I'm saved, and I got I got my baptism certificate, and then I'm a member, uh, so I'm certified, I'm bona fide because of that. That is not what it is. It's the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Um, uh, so if He does not dwell and He does not live in a person, that person is not saved. It's just plain as I can put it. And uh, and we we just believe many people are are, are deceived. Uh, uh, in in this, they think they're okay and they're not, uh, and it just plainly says. That's why I, maybe I didn't say it, say it exactly like this. But if if the things of the Holy Spirit of God uh, are, are seem foreign or unknown, and and, it, and you're not really you not I see, you you might be saying something like this. I, I don't really understand what he's talking about. You we need you need to desperately. And my prayer is that you would seek God uh, and and that He would reveal to you. Uh, and open your heart so that you would know that you know. And I, y'all, I've, I've given a testimony about my, about my son many, many times. He got it, like VBS uh, when he was a little boy, and a lot of kids went down. You know, when one goes, another sees it, and he wants to go. And and they, and he got baptized, and, and you know, and he's he was in his upper twenties. And and if you'd asked me at any time during that prior to that, I'd say, yeah, he say, yeah, he he knows the Lord, and he. And this, that, and the other, and he goes to church, and 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 then all, all of a sudden, at whatever age it was, twenty seven or eight, he got saved, and we thought, I, we just knew he and his, uh, his mother, uh, Cindy, and I knew, just knew he was saved. Well, he wasn't. I said, what did you did you rededicate your life, or did you just, uh, you know, want to get right and repent? And he goes, No, Daddy, I got saved. And and let me tell you, people that are, that are genuinely saved, they know they're saved. And we continue on this. So no Holy Spirit indwelling, no 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 salvation, no salvation. So as we begin to speak about, it, I hope I hope these things will uh, uh, give us. Uh, one of the things we're talking about is, is assurance of salvation. Uh, but let's look at let's look at the work of the Holy Spirit in salvation when He indwells, when He comes upon us, and that regeneration. Big words, I know they're big words, 
It just means that God comes into your heart and you and you just you know you're a sinner and you know you need help, and uh, and righteousness be, begins to to sprout in your heart and you that's what you want. Uh, and we know this is a lifetime battle. Uh, that that sanctification of trying to, to to walk on the paths of righteousness and get sin out of my life. So sin elimination uh, is is really the goal of of, of the flesh to get out and be more like God. You got to kill off the old self. Uh, we mentioned that a few weeks ago. So let's look at Ephesians 1. Oh, man, what a book. Uh, this is just one of the, I, I don't know that this is just my favorite letter, I think. Um, but uh, over at Ephesians 1, and, and this is God's master plan of salvation. We've mentioned this many times. Ephesians 1, beginning in verse 3 down through through verse 14, uh, talks about God the Father in the, in the opening here. And we already mentioned this previously uh that god wants us to be holy and blind. that's what he really wants his desire god's desire for for his created human beings that we be like him we be holy and blameless and then it, it goes into in verse five and six into jesus because that's the way we become uh have righteousness in the, in 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 the in our in our walk which we become more holy and and uh and more blameless as, as we walk and that's our goal uh, and then it begins to talk about the Holy Spirit because it's like this is the, God the Father's, this is his desire. He, he's accomplished that through Jesus, through salvation for us to, to, to become holy and blameless and pure. And then he kind of goes, Paul writes as he gets down into about verse, uh, I don't know, maybe this verse we're going to read here in verse 13, Ephesians 1, 13 and 14, the work of the Holy Spirit. Listen to what Paul writes right here. In him, he's talking about Jesus or God. You also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. Sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Now, listen to what it goes on to say here. All this is really one big, long sentence. Uh, who is given, that's the Holy Spirit, as a pledge of our inheritance. We just talked about him. She's gotten her inheritance with a view to the redemption of God's own possession to pray to the praise of his glory. I know that's a lot right there, but really we're going to look at the Holy Spirit's work right here. That when I have, basically in the beginning of 13, when I believed in Jesus and God opened my heart and I heard the, the gospel, that the Holy Spirit came on me and sealed me with the Holy Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of promise. That who who is he's talking about that he's talking about the Holy Spirit of God is given as a pledge of, of of my inheritance or of our inheritance. Now let's just talk about these two things: sealed and pledge. What does that mean, Marlon? What what did God mean here um, when he when he wrote these things? I love this. This is so plain to me. I, I I've taught this before several times, and every time I, I get excited, every time I talk about it. Um, uh, but there again, we just mentioned the moment of salvation, what we just read in Titus. We get that regeneration and a, a renewing of our mind. We have a new mindset. Um, and uh, and it's trying to get rid of the old and, and living for the new self that, that's talked about. Um, uh, folks, folks, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, if, you, if you don't know God's spirit, these, these are you're going to look at this video and say, that is an idiot. That's, that's a nut. <clears throat> and that's perfectly true because people folks, and we're not putting them down. We just want them to be filled with the Holy Spirit or, or, or be, be indwelled. They don't have the ability to understand it. They, they can't understand it. And uh, and I'm not saying that in any kind of prideful way. I'm, I'm telling you, when I begin to talk about this, I, I'm, I'm a nobody. Uh, uh, you know, that song about I'm, I'm a nobody telling somebody uh, or telling everybody about somebody that can, can help me, and, and the Lord helps. But, uh, but there's this humble abode about us that, that know God and know His Spirit. Uh, so what? So we're regenerated, we're saved, and we're sealed. Uh, I love this. I'm just going to read this to you. That the act of the Holy Spirit's indwelling here when He comes upon us is God's legal and binding contract with us. And we're talking about something. I written here, signed by Jesus. It's a contract with God that I'm His. Uh, I'm sealed forever. We think about the seal in that day of the the, the signet ring that they would use to uh, seal a letter, an official letter from the king. Where they would, uh, you know, put it in wax and put the, you know, we thought like think of an envelope, but most of the time it was like a scroll thing, and they put a seal on it, and it had the emblem of the king. And when you saw it, you knew this is from the king, and uh, and it wasn't just from anybody because that seal was official. Well, this is the seal of the Holy Spirit. It's an official mark of identification. We see, like I said, we see it on letters, and even today uh, we might think of a notary when we get a, when we get something and it's notarized. It's official. 
is exactly what this sealed means by the Holy Spirit. Uh, the blessing is, let me tell you about being sealed by the Holy Spirit, you cannot mess it up. I can't mess this up. That's one thing I love about it. As bad as I, as I am sometimes in my sins, I, this is a done deal. God, this is a legal contract that is binding between me and God. Remember, Jesus is my mediator, and, uh, and it's done. Now, what about a pledge? Uh, who is given as a pledge of our inheritance? Now, this even gets better to me as I understand this. kind of gets in my wheelhouse of my profession of, of land surveying. Uh, the pledge, uh, as I read this, I don't know, we might have taught this several years. We might have been in VBS where God's Spirit, man, you're talking about the Holy Spirit, the acts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the adult, and I pray it's in every class, but the VBS adult class, uh, it, it, I, it's not Pentecost. I don't even want to put it there, but it is a major work of the Holy Spirit of God. So I would encourage you next summer when we get right back around to it, Lord willing, uh, uh, when that time comes to be in that adult class because it is the acts of the Holy Spirit for sure. Uh, and so maybe we talked about that then, but I, this my heart just comes alive. What is this pledge of, of my inheritance that, that, that Paul is talking about here in this master plan of salvation? And this is about the Holy Spirit of God. Remember, he comes in and seals us. Now it's a pledge. It's likened to a down payment. Listen to this. Uh, or earnest money. I love this. This is so plain. I think John Phillips' commentary laid this out in such a way that when I, in a real estate contract, or, or when I'm serious about buying something and I want this property or this home, and sometimes out of necessity, I, uh, I'm telling you, this real estate market right now, at least a few months ago, it was crazy um, that uh, you know, people were wanting to buy houses. And, uh, and I, t I told people, I said, if you uh, decide to sell your house, you better have a place to go because your house is going to sell. Uh, very very quickly uh, on the market. It's never been anything like it. Uh, but but so you got to be serious about what you're about to do, even when you sell. But but the person that comes in to buy something, uh, they're not going to put money down on something. They're not going to put down uh, a down payment. Because a lot of times the earnest money. Listen to me. And earnest money in a in a in a human contract or a on earth is non refundable. You put a down payment down. And uh, unless it's, uh, you know, the, 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 the seller decides to do that, earnest money is, is in and it's kept. Uh, and, and that's exactly what God's spirit is in, in our, uh, when we're, when we're uh, um, indwelled, when he comes upon us and we're sealed. Uh, it, uh, it, may, it, it means we're serious, and, and it means that God is serious when, when he does this, when he, when he sends his spirit. Um, and also, listen to this, not only is it, is it, is it a uh, kind of a, a like we say it's a legal contract when we're sealed, uh, but the down to earnest money is it certainly means we're serious and we intend to purchase, but also it ensures in a real estate transaction that nobody else can step in in front of us. And there's a lot of that mess going around. Uh, we call it buying something out from under somebody. Say like two people, one person says, "Yeah, I, I'll sell you my land." for X amount of dollars, and, uh, and this happens. This just happened in some folks in my family just a few months ago. Just a kind of a handshake agreement. You think you know the person, and, and your word is your word, right? Well, it was. There's not much anymore. And then somebody else finds out about it and says, hey, I, I'll give you $500 more an acre or whatever, and next thing you know, it's, but, but not, not in salvation, folks, and not, not here in, in what we're, we're speaking of this morning. Uh, nobody can step in. And if you don't believe that, go over and read John 10, chapter 10, verses 28 and 29. This is, our, this is probably the most profound verses spoken by Jesus about eternal security. And you want to you know that you, your pledge uh, is good, that, uh, that God's pledge is good. No one, Jesus said twice, verbatim verses almost. It's almost like God the Father says it and then Jesus says it. Uh, that the God the Father, nobody's going to snatch anybody out of his hands, the devil or anyone. Uh, you can't take you. Remember the cross is the great divider. You can't go to hell if you're, if you're saved. You know what I mean? You can't go there. We've often said this as kind of a joke. Somebody tells you to, to go there, to go to hell. You tell them you can't. <laughs> he ain't going to let you go there. You can't go there. Uh, uh, and so John 28, 29, this eternal security of, a, of this pledge, this down payment. Now listen to this. Listen to this note. Uh, so it is with the Holy Spirit's indwelling that God makes his down payment on you personally when you're saved, on your soul, and that he is serious and that God, we already said this, means business. And 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 we got to remember, listen to this. Oh, this gets better and better. We talk about eternal life because it says, what's our pledge? Is our inheritance with a view of redemption. 
uh, to his own possession. Um, uh, and and uh, we just read a while ago in Romans 8, eternal, eternal life, uh, that uh, uh, but this is only a down payment, folks. The, the, the Holy Spirit's uh, sealing of us and pledging is only a fraction of what it costs. You see what I'm saying? The earnest money doesn't buy the property. It just means I'm serious. Uh, and what that does is looks to, an, a, a, from an eternal view, when we're saved, how much more there is to come. It's just a, remember, the Holy Spirit's just a down, it's just a fraction, um, uh, and an earnest money is a fraction of the cost of the house. The earnest money doesn't buy the house, but it certainly holds us there. And when we think about that, we just think about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in us now and the way we can live and have peace and have the peace. And I know I'm jumping ahead of a lot of notes as, 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 as joy comes into my heart about having peace in your heart over these things. Think of eternity. If this is just a down payment, what about the rest uh, in heaven and being in God's presence? And it's just... Uh, there's so much more to come is what we're trying to say here. So the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 1, 13 to 14, he seals us and then he is our pledge. It's God's promise of things to come, uh, of God's, listen to this, own possession. And that moves me right into the, the thought of, of, of us being a temple. Uh, 1 Corinthians, I want to go there just a minute. And uh, 1 Corinthians 619 there's a verbatim verse in, in 316 uh, but uh, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 619 and Paul is asking this question um, and, and he asked it the same way you know Paul was he would ask a, a question an emphatic question challenging uh, he would say something like this or do you not know well, you you do know it but he's trying to say please why why don't you remember? But in 19, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? There it is. You're, if you're indwelled, remember, God has come to live. If you're indwelled, then your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit of, of, of God. Remember what it just said at the end of, uh, uh, in 14, it's God's possession now. He owns us. Remember, he's put a pledge down on us. He's put a down payment through the Holy Spirit, and we belong to him now. And we know that scriptural when we know it in our hearts, but well, we always want to do it our way and not God's way, just like like He doesn't on us, but He does. Uh, if you're saved, remember that. If the Holy Spirit does not dwell in you, you are not a son of God. Uh, and I pray that wouldn't be that would not be a would not apply to anyone who ever even watches this video. Uh, but 19, do you not know again that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? So, uh, oh, that's just a question. It's very this is something that came to mind. And, um, that I that I wrote down in the back of my Bible and my little jot notes that I write down sometimes, of the four places that the Holy Spirit or no, not, well, it's the Holy Spirit, but it's where God, where God dwelled, and, and we're going to look at God in the three per, in all three persons, um, not not generally just as we're speaking on the third person of the Holy Spirit and the triune nature of God, but but God in 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 his in his whole his whole council. Um, four places on planet Earth where the Holy Spirit dwelled or God dwelled, okay? And the first of those was in the tabernacle. Remember the tent of meeting that Moses, um, God told him to make? And boy, you go and read uh, the, the, the details of the things, that the way they constructed that thing, the way they carried it when they broke it down because it was a portable tent, basically, but it was elaborate beyond elaborate. Um, but... God's spirit dwelled there. God went there, and He was in that tent of meeting. He had meetings with him, with Moses there. the The second one uh, is in chronological order was Solomon's temple. Remember, David wanted to build a temple. Well, he wanted to build that thing bad, but so he ended up getting all the materials ready. And then Solomon came in. He built it. And remember that when when they when they kind of uh, set it apart for for God and consecrated the temple, he came in there, and it was mighty powerful. It's filled with smoke, and it was a very graphic. Um, uh, sighting there in the presence of God probably scared the life out of people. Did that? I can't imagine seeing God and and watching God up on the you know from the ground, watching uh, you know the the boundaries around the mountain with Israel and God's you know Moses went up there for forty days, came back and his face was glowing. Remember, and they were they, they were scared to death to even look at him. He had to put a veil over his face, but 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 he was in Solomon's temple. So he was in a tabernacle. He was in uh, Solomon's temple. Now, now we move into the New Testament. There's two places in the old, two places in the new. 
and certainly this one should come to mind immediately, was Jesus, God himself, the, 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 the second person of, of God, Jesus, our Savior. He dwelled on earth. I mean, literally, he was born here. Uh, remember, conceived by the Holy Spirit. Remember that, about giving life? Um, and he lived here. He dwelled here. So he dwelled here. Now, now the fourth one is what we just got through talking about. Our, the indwelling means to stay. That's in every single believer. The Holy Spirit comes upon us, uh, and he stays. He's in our heart. He's got us in all these wonderful things, sealed, pledged, uh, protected, uh, 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 all of God's promises are, are, are wrapped up in that, and it is it is certainly uh, the assurance of our salvation. So uh, we just think about these things. Uh, we're bought, we're not our own, and we're God's temple. And, and then we get into, uh, boy, I'll tell you, that's that's where your your sin needs to weigh heavily on you because if 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 I belong to Him now, uh, and I mean even doing things to your body, smoking and drinking, and the things that we don't, you know, that, that and they work against physical life anyway people a lot of people i heard someone say today i've got had, had a lung problem because i used to smoke 20 years ago you know and that's not even spiritual but 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 we begin to do things to our body that that aren't um you know that don't in the in the long run aren't beneficial remember the advantage and we're talking spiritual now the holy spirit's work so so you're his temple and he dwells within you. If indeed you're saved, and if indeed, as, as Paul made clear in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, uh, 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 that uh, we, our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. He comes in, and he stays, and he dwells. Let's look at assurance of salvation uh, here, and and, uh, um, and and from there we'll go uh, to Romans uh, 8. Uh, we, just, we were just there, and we're going to go back there for, for a minute. Um, and we've been taught this a lot, okay? We've heard this a lot at Emmett Grove. This is something that we've, uh, um, uh, about the God's assurance of salvation. And so right when we're reading at 8 and 9, we're going to go to over uh, to, uh, to 8, uh, 16. And, and this verse is just sort of standalone right here. It's talking about the, the Spirit of God, again, the Holy Spirit. Uh, and let's read this verse, uh, Romans 8, 16. The Spirit himself... That's, say that, that's the Holy Spirit himself see it capitalized himself he's a person testifies with our spirit that's our soul that's our little spirit the little capital I mean not little capital small letter S spirit that's us person people soul remember God made us a living being we became a soul that we are children of God so this, this the word is testifies here the spirit himself testifies with our spirit remember that's the interaction that we are children of God, it means I'm saved, uh, that I know him. Um, and uh, go on to say in verse 17, and if children, in other words, if, if I'm in dwell, we're also heirs. We just talked about that. We're heirs of the inheritance of God and fellow heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him, speaking of after life on earth, well, he's going to glorify us, and the Holy Spirit will do that. Remember we talked about the resurrection last week power of the Holy Spirit. The power that raised Jesus raises us, and that power is the power of God through his Holy Spirit. So we've been taught this at Emmett many times. And, and the, the, the little subtopic here within this about the, the Holy Spirit assures us, testifies of our salvation. There were three uh, uh, evidences of salvation. Now these are not all of them, please. And they're not, they're not even really in a ranking type thing, but they kind of first come to mind. These are three evidences of your salvation of the Holy Spirit's indwelling that 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 should be apparent. And this is sort of the what where you, where you start, okay? First of all, the first one, and we Pastor Tim, I don't know how many times, and uh, and I think about this a lot. And I and I when I'm teaching a lot of times I bring it back up. That uh, obedience. That's number that's not going to say number one, it's just it's just the first one that I'm bringing up here. And it, it's not that everybody should have, you know, be obedient. That's not what we're trying to say, but a desire to be obedient. So what we're trying to say, I want to be obedient to God. If there is no desire to be obedient, you got a, you may have a very, very serious problem, eternal problem. Uh, John 14, uh, 15, Jesus said, if you love me, you want to keep my commands. So the first thing is, is a desire. Do I, am I, am I obedient all the time? Absolutely not. Uh, no, I am not. Matter of fact, the Holy Spirit is going to let me know that. Um, and sometimes it seems like I'm more disobedient than I'm, than I am obedient. Uh, and you know, a lot of times our our problems is we 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 think a lot of it is being um, 
uh, things, uh, uh, um, commissions, things that I do. But really, a lot of times, it's things that I don't do that really mess up my walk with God and uh, in, in a sense. Uh, it's, it's those uh, sins of omission, the things that I don't do, and having that desire to be obedient. Uh, uh, the, uh, the second one that, that in those three uh, 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 litmus tests of your salvation is loving other believers. Now, I know it's hard to love people sometimes. It really is. But but uh, John, 1 John uh, uh, chapter 3 addresses that. Remember, uh, John uh, identified himself. He never did say, this is John, whatever. He said that he was the disciple whom Jesus loved. So he understood what real love was. And we're not talking about like the love, I love fried chicken. That, it's not that kind of love. It, it is that love of calling God my mind, but he's my daddy. And it's deep, uh, Abba Father love, um, agape love. And he loves me back no matter how I am. But that love, we got to love believers and, um, and, and be a forgiving uh, um uh, believer, uh, or forgiveness is everything in the kingdom of God. Uh, and the third one is the Holy Spirit, and it's this verse, uh, is Romans eight sixteen, and this is just one of those verses that stands out, that the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. You can, we can rephrase that, that the Holy Spirit assures me, my heart and my soul, that I'm saved. That's, uh, that would be a, kind of a, uh, um, um, uh, a paraphrase, I guess you might say, of that verse right there, the way I understand it. And I know it's true because the Spirit reveals that. So what about this testifying? Uh, and I do want to say this, that this is, uh, I wrote down here, it's personal, very, very personal to me, very, very grateful for this verse. Um, um, uh, uh, this is uh, personally my assurance of my salvation is, is the work of the Holy Spirit. I can't say that I've always really realized that. Um, uh, uh, this testifies uh, is, is very, it's like I say, it's very personal and simply put, uh, it's just an experience, personal experience for me personally uh, through be becoming uh, uh, a praying person, a praying believer when I truly began to pray and, uh, and, and began to seek God and then God began to speak back in meditation and such. Um, uh, and reading God's word, prayer and reading God's word, I'm telling you, if you ever want to know that you're saved, and there might be a two-way street on this in a sense, that uh, if you don't have a desire to read God's word, and I'm telling you, the enemy does not want you reading his word, and he does not want you prayer. One thing that I can will say that he fears most of all is prayer. He doesn't care about religion. He doesn't care about anything. But but for a believer in Jesus Christ, he doesn't want you praying, and he doesn't because he, he knows the power of prayer, and we don't. We don't realize that. I mean, even the demons know it. We don't even know it. Um, but these two things, uh, and simply put about testifying, is is that by the work of the Holy Spirit, and this is just my testimony, I agree with what God's Word says. doesn't mean that I got it down perfect, but I, when I read it, I know it's true. And the Holy Spirit illuminates Scripture in such a way that I know it's true. And, and, uh, and, and we just mentioned this about the natural man, the man that doesn't have God's Spirit. He can't, he can't comprehend this. He's not able to. He's not spiritually discerned uh he, he can't comprehend the things of god without the holy spirit's help so he assures us in salvation um i wrote down here in another note uh, uh on romans eight sixteen that that uh that to me personally and listen salvation is personal i i don't know if i, re if I mentioned this when we opened up but but about the holy spirit's work and about the assurance of your salvation only you and God know if you're saved or not. But the thing is, it's, it, if there's any deception in, in a person's heart, ask God to help you with that. Not not to doubt Him, but to make sure that you know. And He will. He His Spirit is the one that's going to confirm uh, uh, your salvation, uh, assurance of your salvation. He does that um, uh, every time I study for a Sunday school lesson, or or, or I go hear a sermon, or. I, um, and I'm telling you, I can get in the flesh as much as anybody. And the flesh is death. I know that. Uh, and, I, and I know the two, you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm understanding spiritual warfare. And these are the things that, that the Spirit does to assure me. But, but I wrote down there, I don't even know if this is even gr grammatically correct in a sense, but I wrote that this to me is an experienced, understood verse. You must pray and you must read God's Word to experience the work of the Holy Spirit of God. So if you ever want to know if you're saved, begin to read God's Word. And, and our pastor has led us in a way that for years now, read the Bible, read the Bible, read the Bible. 
and uh, and he just keeps on, and, and, and you need to do that. And people have been putting it off, and it, it'll change you. It will flat change you. And, and I'll tell you one thing. You'll know if you're saved or not, uh, I promise you. Uh, God's Word comes alive in my soul uh, when I read it, and I know it's true and faithful. And I just, like I said, testify means I just agree. I just I agree with God. I agree that I'm that I'm bad off and I'm wrong. Um, and then it comforts us. You know, and I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is a comforter. That's what Jesus said. He was trying to comfort his disciples in, over in John 15 and 16. He was about to go away, and he called him the comforter, and that's what he is. He gives us the peace of God. That Romans 5 chapter 5 verse 1 uh, the peace of God and you have that through the Holy Spirit so he assures us of salvation um, now let's let's close with another thought about obedience because one of those uh, evidences was of obedience okay a desire to be obedient um, Acts 5 32 and this is interesting because this is right about the time that, uh, right after the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost uh, this is another one of those verses I, that I highlighted and, and, and found uh um, and remember what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit in John 15, 26. He said that he will testify about me. He, he's going to testify. He's going to let you know uh, that, I, that I am Savior. And he does that when he opens hearts and certainly when he regenerates and saves us, uh, changes us, and we become his. Remember, we we're sealed and we're pledged in these things. Uh, but he's going to testify about Jesus. He's, and and, and, and when, he, when the Holy Spirit comes up, then we begin to agree that we just said here, but here's the here's the thing here that that uh, over in Acts five thirty two that, that that Peter uh, uh, wrote. They had just thrown him in prison, and then the angel came. God sent an angel. One of the few last really last times that uh, the angels were, were active. Um, we mentioned that man a week or two ago. There's not a lot of angelic activity after Christ, but there was when the when the church began to grow in Acts, and God was using His angels as messengers and. And deliverers, uh, certainly in, in Revelations in the end, they will become very, very, very active. But uh, here, well, we see this. Anyway, got them out of prison, the, the, the angel did. And they said, the men you've locked up in verse 25, this is in chapter 5 of Acts. And Acts means, by the way, Acts of the Holy Spirit. So uh, it's fitting that we would come back here to, to this particular chapter or book of the Bible. 25, and in chapter 5, it says, The men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple. And they're teaching the people. They just locked them up because they were, they were preaching Christ. Um, and then they were, they were. You know, we told y'all not to say anything, and we, and uh, uh, we don't know. You know, that, that miraculously they they escaped, uh, or got. You know, God sent the angel and opened up the jail, um, and and got them out of there. But Peter in verse twenty nine said, "The apostles answered, we can't listen to this. We must obey God rather than men." Whatever you're trying to tell us, I can't go against God's word. We and none of us can in this wicked world. We we've got to, to, to obey God. I got we got to obey God rather than men. And when any time even government, even time it, things begin to work against God's word, we got we got to stay true, even if even if we get thrown in prison. And that's what just a real life um, uh, example of this in the Bible. Let's just read on down. Thirty two is where I want to end up. And the God, he's explaining, Peter is, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you have put to death by hanging him on the cross. And they knew it. <clears throat> uh, and he is the one whom God exalted to his right hand, praise God for that, and as a prince and a savior to grant repentance. Now we're talking about obedience, but, but repentance turns us from disobedience to obedience, to Israel and forgiveness of sin. Now listen to 32. And we... Paul and the apostles and all those that, that, that love the Lord, the church. That's really what he's saying here. And we are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, listen, the Holy Spirit, capital Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. What did we just say? One of the evidence of your salvation by the Holy Spirit's work is a desire to be obedient. Now, we can look at this in two, two ways and we'll get ready to close here. It could be the call of salvation, that when God called, and I pray that he calls every one of y'all that listen here. If you're not saved, I pray you have assurance that he assures you. And if not, that you come to know him. Uh, uh, but he opens the heart, and I become obedient to the gospel. Obedient gospel, not, it's not just in our walk. That's the second thing, but that we that we come to know him. Uh, that's God. Remember, God is a saving God. Remember that a few weeks ago. Uh, and secondly, in our walk, and this is kind of where we're going to be going over the ne in the next week, uh, how the Holy Spirit empowers us to walk. Uh, and, and I wrote a little note here that's amazing how God's Spirit works through your obedience 
and, and so I, I, the way I love to, to look at this verse is, is that if I want more of God's Spirit and I want the advantage Jesus spoke of, of him and help uh, and the power, and these are the things we're going to look at next week. Uh, I've got some notes over here about he guides us. He gives us discernment. Um, uh, we, he, he, it gives us the source, that's Jesus, of, of, of righteousness, uh, discernment, obedience, uh, faith. Uh, the power to stand firm uh, uh, then in prayer and inter interceding uh, of these things uh, the more obedient to God that I am the more power I'm going to have the more control of the Holy Spirit the flesh uh, the flesh and the spirit the battle I'm going to mention that next week uh, um, uh, then we're going to talk about being filled with the Holy Spirit grieving and quenching and even blasphemy of the Holy Spirit I'll remember this is a little mini series of the Holy Spirit of God in this so if I'm more obedient, I'm seeking God, I'm praying, I'm reading God's word, I begin. And it, it's like it comes full circle. This really is. When, when, I, when I come to know Christ first, and, and then I begin to understand that, that partial obedience is not obedience at all. You can't be partly obedient and say, yeah, I'm obedient to God. You're either obedient or you're not. And you're never going to achieve that. So it's like, well, well what, are we, what are we fighting for? Man, we're just trying to get to eternity. We're trying to get to when Jesus comes back and gets you. And to be sealed and to have his pledge that you're going to be with him. Uh, but that doesn't mean we just give up. You know what I mean? That's not it. Uh, and we, we want to keep keep up the good fight, just like Kim uh, did. She kept up the good fight right to the end. She could have blamed God. She shook her fist at God. She did not. Shared shared with me personal someone that was with her when she was the very first words of words of cancer came to news from the doctors and her first this is uh, this is just incredible it wasn't anything about her her family but this is going to glorify God that's I, those were people that witnessed what she said that's the power of God folks that that's not a fleshly reaction that that is just that's just unbossed. I marvel at it. I, I really do. Um, obedience. It comes full circle to be and be faithful to God uh, so that we can have that advantage. Remember, we want to know what the will of the Lord is. So when I'm obedient to God, he sends his spirit, spirit in a sense that uh, uh, that the Holy Spirit, even though he's indwelled in me, I can grieve and quench him in such a way that the flesh can, can dominate over that and that battle between the flesh and the spirit uh, all of these things uh, uh, of, of the Holy Spirit of God, and I'm telling you, it's just we're just touching the tip of the of the iceberg, as they say. Uh, you know, the iceberg is just a uh, it's, it looks really huge when it sticks up out of the water, but they say that the base of it under the water is immense. And you only see a speck of it. So we're just seeing a speck of God's um, uh, spirit here, the Holy Spirit of God in this study. So um, I hope you have some clarity here today. Of the work of the Holy Spirit and, and and what He does for the believer. Remember, this is very personal. I pray that you would uh, seek Him, uh, and, and that that uh, that you would have firm assurance of your salvation through Him, sealed and pledged by by God, and uh, uh, that you belong to Him and the things that we've talked about, and to be obedient. And, and the Holy Spirit certainly guides us in that. He gives His Holy Spirit to those who obey Him. So let's close. Father God, we thank you this morning. Lord, I love you. I praise you. Lord, even now that your spirit is testifying, right, even as I pray and, and, and give this lesson, uh, that I agree with the holy word of God. I agree that it's holy, and I agree that, that it is, uh, uh, it is uh, uh, the walk on the path of righteousness. Lord, that I would live my life in, in, in more obedience and love other believers, God. Um, uh, Lord, and, and to, just to have your spirit testify with me lord that you are right lord and and i am wrong god i i, I don't know how you save people like that it's the miracle of uh, of being just and and the justifier at the same time that you can save us through forgiveness of our sins uh, that we would not remain in our sins but go uh, and um, and sin no more uh, uh lord help us i thank you for your spirit thank you holy spirit today for this lesson i pray that uh, you would speak to those open hearts i pray a lot of questions might arise uh, as to our eternal life and how i'm living my life and am i really obedient to god uh, so lord we pray you would spend you'd send the comforter you'd you'd send the helper uh, send the advantage of god that we need and that's the holy spirit of god in jesus name we pray these things amen and amen